because uh, okay <laughs> Um, because uh, every project takes uh, about um, 400, 500 hours in average per company, which means including external support and writing the report and internal hours. Um, so this is a like for every company, for every city owned companies. I mean, they, they are very different sizes, of course, but uh, the ones I know are between let's say 350 and 1000 uh, um, employees so you you they have to they have to count on 500 hours in average for this project and um, which means this is a real big additional project for them and and a real challenge because the 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 um, companies we were accompanying they didn't have a sustainability manager in place or uh, they, they, they did ha didn't even have a marketing or PR unit because they usually don't not they don't need marketing and PR because uh, they are city owned. So some of them do, um, but uh, some of them don't. Um, and they're even forbidden to use marketing. Uh, um, uh, so they don't have any um, well persons who, who would be able to manage a project like this. So, um, you might expect a lack of time resources uh, in such a project. Uh, in, in most of the city-owned companies, we were accompanying it. So hopefully in the next future, it would be different, but this is what we see or what we saw at least. Um, so they need intense support, gathering all the information which is necessary to write such a um, Econgood report and uh, and and. And even they need even support with with writing the report because there is no one there who might write it. It's very obvious um, uh, for small companies. Uh, there's always someone, but in big companies, it's um, it's very hard if if you don't have a, a certain person um, who is going to do the job. <laughs> So um, to serve these needs, we created a, a service in which we not only moderate meetings as econ good consultants, but also um, offer the whole management of the project and editorial support, writing the whole report. So um, we were closely guiding through the process as if we were employed sustainability managers. So this is a big difference to, let's say, a usual small company uh, or a big company which already has sustainability managers in place. So because they, there is no answer who is going to, to manage this project. And if we wouldn't have served like this, I would say most of the companies at the beginning wouldn't have finished the whole process. So this is, I think, very important to, to keep in mind if you start with, um, with um, city-owned companies. Of course, some are creative and they get students to write. Uh, so there, there are creative solutions. They don't need uh, like, a, like consultants to do all the jobs, but they have to be very creative and this has to be clear. Um, so yeah, um, when when the companies do the re-audit, things become much easier for them. And most of the time there is already a person then in place who's able to to at least manage the project if it's the second time so they know uh, what what will happen and what the questions will be so this is about uh, the, the challenging uh, the challenges uh, about these companies uh, we 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 adapted to it so that's why we specialized on it because there is most of the, of the time there's someone who's writing uh, in our team not only um, who's who's um, um, uh, consulting, but also who's writing. Um, so, and what are the rewards for this uh, for these companies? Um, the results of the of the uh, evaluation of of, of these city owned companies are, of course, always very positive for them, because in the eyes of the Econ Good idea, a stakeholder owned companies like a city owned companies, um, which serves a common purpose is the ideal company. So uh, so these companies get rewarded for what they do simply because they do 
what they do, why they do what they do. <laughs> so um, because uh, all of them are, are purpose driven, of course. Um, so this is what's hel what, what helps them, uh, uh, makes them, uh, and what, what, what makes them proud for father communication. Uh, it's uh, the econ good reward of who they are and what they serve. Uh, so this is uh, most of the time, the first time the companies get this kind of feedback because most of the time the companies get the feedback that they are not enough. They are um, not, uh, they, they don't have a positive financial outcome. So this, uh, this uh, evaluation of the econ good gives them a very positive uh, feedback, which they can, which they can uh, use. Um, and so later on that their task is most of the time to improve their company culture. This is the big task because uh, the purpose is, is great. Um, the stakeholder uh, connection is, is good because it's owned by, by the citizens, basically. I mean, not directly, but still about, uh, well, in, in, in democracies, it's basically owned by the citizens. So it's, it's good. But most of them, they, they start working on the company culture um, after going through the evaluation process um, of the um, econ good uh, balance sheet. Um, because most of them are quite conservative and they are not, it's not, they are not very modern, um, up-to-date companies. Um, so the um, econ good questions bring lots of fresh air uh, into into them, <laughs> um, so these were processes we we started to accompany. Um, there were, for example, uh, certain um, working groups which started to work on, on on certain topics to improve after having finished the, the the balance sheet, and after getting the audit, then they started working um, in certain working groups. For example, improving. Um, the well, let's say uh, the, the the company culture and uh, um, uh, yet the, the the buying and and um, yeah um, interaction with clients and so on. So yes, um, that's uh, that's about uh, the the experiences in general. Um, I just want to to share uh, one or two pictures. Um, uh, I brought uh, just uh, yes. I, I I'm just thinking. I think some people aren't really aware of what is a publicly owned company. Could you maybe mention some examples of not necessarily specific examples, but what are in general publicly owned companies? Well, yeah, um, and I think we should better um, talk about city owned companies because publicly owned uh, is i think it's a bit uh, it's a different uh, it, it's a different uh, name I, i'm not sure uh, but but this uh, city owned companies are companies like for example drainage companies um, which serve a public uh, purpose um, or uh, for example uh, some uh, um, elderly people's uh, um, uh, who serve elderly people. You, you mean old age homes, yes, retirement age homes. homes? Yes, exactly. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. um, so there are uh, lots of, uh, well, uh, companies which if you give it, if you would have given it to a private sector, no one would do it. <laughs> um, and uh, so there must be some kind of uh, solution. So um, every um, every city uh, founded its own companies um, to, to manage certain uh, purposes. So, yeah. And uh, for example, we, we, we accompanied uh, drainage companies. Um, there is, uh, there is um, in, in Cologne, I'm, I'm sharing, um, I will share with you the uh, a nice picture. Uh, well, uh, yeah. And this is uh, the picture of the uh, audit um, so you see there are lots of people involved in it. Um, the company has um, uh, close to 700 um, em employees and um, I think a turnover of um, more than 200 million euro. So they have something to manage there. So the whole process was, uh, well, th there were 
completely involved. I mean, not every of these 700 employees, but uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe 50 people or so were involved in this process. So this is what the, the Christmas uh, the Christmas present, uh, the uh, um, ECG um, or Econ Good Audit. I'm still saying ECG, I'm old school. I'm, again, I'm, I'm accompanying this uh, movement for a very long time. So for me, it's still ECG, not Econ Good. <laughs> and um, yeah, and so, is, so the other question is, uh, what are they doing with the results? So first of all, of course, um, the Econ Good movement says, okay, you should go into a process and improve yourself. But the other question is, how can they communicate it? Because the problem is um, at, at, at the end of the process, you have a, a, a more than 100 pages of writing, of analysis uh, of the report. Um, and to be honest, no one is reading it. <laughs> so how can... Um, how can they they manage to do it? And what we did, for example, for the for the Stuttgart drainage company is to to um, design a short, a very short version of this uh, econ good uh, results of this hundred and twenty pages because it's very technical. A drainage company is is talking about uh, about lots of technique and. Uh, um, complicated things, and um, but still, they said it was. It's very important for uh, our employees to understand what we do and what we were proud of. So, what we what we are doing or trying to do most of the time is to to comply a, a, a brochure or well, a, a very short and easy to understand version of this complicated process. So every employee would understand what are the, the results and what, our, what are our topics. For example, this is about how they, they, they buy and this is about um, where they, they have been um, uh, um, uh, judged. No. Um, it's about their purchasing. Yes, uh, yeah. And, and how and, they've been evaluated on yeah, it. Evaluated. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. Um, so this is a, a very easy way to understand. It's only uh, two pages, every topic, and to, to bring the very basic information uh, to the people. And they use it um, as an onboarding uh, as an onboarding document for new employees. Um, so they understand what the company is all about and what the culture of the company is. Um, and these things uh, are now spread all over this uh, city-owned company. Um, also with these illustrations, they have been created only uh, for this, uh, this uh, EconGood um, report. Um, so, and, and they try to explain what they do, what their purpose is, um, who they're co cooperating with. So these are basically the, the topics of the of the report, but brought to a very uh, dense uh, uh, style. And also, um, the, for example, we we um, we communicate um, the aims for the future. So this says uh, we are we are here is where we will work on. So it's not about like an, a greenwashing image brochure. Um, it, is, it is straightforward. It says uh, what the auditor said. And um, it also says we are not, not, not good enough at the moment. And these are, are our aims. So this is one way we try to, um, to, to focus the, the, the results and to make it publicly more understandable because some things are really complicated to explain especially in the city owned businesses uh, when they when they are do a very technical thing yeah so that is so gr so great and i guess it's such a great idea to make it this way to make it easier understandable because i guess this way we can also draw in the public civil society that they become aware of ooh wow this is an additional method that exists that is something that any company could do. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of this with us, Oliver. And great work. Keep on doing it. Thank you very, very much. And um, now I'm handing over to Heidi again. 
<laughs> Only to introduce you, Daniela. <laughs> so now we have a session um, with Daniela. Daniela is going to share with us the updates on the Econ Good label and branding, which you can see all over the presentations uh, today. So Daniela, um, over to you. Okay, thank you. Well, yes, as Heidi already mentioned, so just to make it really visible, oops, now this fell apart. So I'm here now, as many people in the movement, I have several roles and I'm now wearing my label hat and <laughs> not the facilitator hat, but I'm not going to stay like this kind of looks silly. So um, why am I presenting this anyway? Well, first of all, of course, it is something that is of importance to the entire movement and um, we've reached great milestones. Um, and second of all, this entire project was decided on by the delegates assembly. So it is more than proper to also share with you, where are we now? What's available for all of you, et cetera, et cetera. Now, let me just share my screen with you. And for some reason, one moment, please. I don't know why. Here we go. Okay. You're seeing the presentation now. Um, given that there are so many people and you all have very different levels of knowledge about the project, I will try to fulfill everyone's needs and want to still see that I have enough time at the end to answer all your questions. If that should not be possible, please send an email to label at ecogood.org. So we have reached a great milestone. We have launched the label. We have launched the branding. And it's already being adopted by many people within the movement. And we're getting really positive feedback, which is making us, of course, very happy. And this is only possible thanks to a wonderful team which has been working on this. Thank you to all of you. Um, some of you are here like Estrellita translating, actually. Thank you so much. No. So we're going to look at the initial situation. Then we'll go a bit deeper into branding before we look at the label, then at network signs and the introduction of the rebranding. As I said, I'm going to go through everything relatively quickly. So let's have a look at the in initial situation. Just to make sure that all of us use the same vocabulary and understand what is what. What you're seeing on the left side are logos. These are distinguishing features that represent a organization and they're usually used on printed materials such as letterheads and business cards, flyers, but also on websites and social media. On the right hand side, you see what a label is. That is a quality mark with which, with, which with a graphic expresses the quality of a company or a product. And on both, you see on the bottom um, our symbols. And on the left hand side, what you're seeing is our old logo underneath the McDonald's golden arches. And you see that you barely see it because it was suboptimal for small reproduction. On the right hand side, you're seeing our new Econ Good logo label underneath the EU organic food label. Now, due to the lack of any kind of official label, many organizations had been very creative and created their own labels. And what you're seeing here is just a small selection of what had been created over the course of the years. Um, what's our timeline? Um, what you see on the top line are major milestones. And on the bottom, you see various kinds of meetings where we informed about the progress of the branding and label project. Of course, all these meetings were announced by email and in newsletters. What I do want to point out particularly is Q2 2020, that was the delegates um, assembly decision, which based on which we started this project officially. And at the very end, Q1 2024, you see our launch this year, February 15th at the Biofach Nuremberg Trade Fair. 
Now, frequently active members complain about the lack of publicity that we're receiving. And part of the reason for that is that we're not being recognized as one organization due to the lack of distinctive graphic representation. And if you think of other organizations such as B Corp or Greenpeace, WWF, UNICEF, they all have clear, clear distinctive visual language. And um, they don't necessarily always adapt the various um, languages into their branding. Now, right now, as we stand, we're not necessarily being recognized as one organization. And our name, Economy for the Common Good, is generic and it cannot be protective, protected by trade law. By law. And um, I want to briefly point out for the German speakers amongst here that there are um, movements that have absolutely nothing to do with us, particularly in Germany and Switzerland, and they love the terminology Gemeinwohl. Um, in case you want to read up some further on this, we have a site in the wiki. Let's hope that this works now. Are you seeing my wiki? Heidi, could I just see a... Yes. Yep. Okay. So there's a site in the wiki where you can read up on this. Um, about who all uses um, Gemeinwohl, who has nothing to do with us. Um, back to the presentation. No, this is not what I want to share with you. Okay, you're seeing the presentation again, I assume. Status quo page, yes. Perfect, okay. So the logical solution would have been we change our name to EcoGood, since that's the URL we've already been using for many years. Unfortunately, that was not an option because there was a Berlin-based company that didn't like it. Um, now, some people say, well, so there was a process which led us to decide on EconGood. Um, and some people are saying, well, why are we changing the, num the name? I like it so much and we're being known by this name. Yes, we are being known by this name, but let's be honest, how many people know about us in whichever language, be it economy for the common good, Gemeinwohl Ökonomie, or Ökonomia del Bien Commun, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're 14 years old. Um, if you look at organizational development, we're basically going through puberty. And as Goethe said, um, parents should give their children um, roots when they're little and wings when they get older. And if we're quite honest and look at this, right now, being whatever name we have, economy for the common good, we're basically still in phase one of a market maturity. Um, we're only just introducing ourselves. Um, but what we do want to reach is we want to go up the curve. We want to be able to be known and growing. So we're assuming that having a strong brand and a label, we will go up growth and then move up the curve. And um, changing name, changing logo. Yes, of course, nobody likes changes, but... Um, they're very large companies like Mercedes, Adidas. They've all changed their logos during the course of the years. And if you just think about X, which used to be Twitter, um, it is also very common to change the name of larger companies. Now, let's look at the branding. So again, the graphic symbol that represents a certain organization. So this is our new branding, our new name. We came about that name during a very large meeting in August 2020 with 23 participants from 14 nations. And um, then this name was registered um, in 2022. What does that name mean? It can mean economy and good, eco and good as well as good economy. It has a number of advantages because it's a natural evolution of the existing branding. 
it's applicable internationally, which I've just noticed that's so fabulous with being here from all around the globe and people all talk about econ good and they all have the same logo on their slides and it works for everybody. Um, plus, as you saw on the very first slide, it's easily recognizable even in small print size. And we're keeping the seedlings, which many members like a lot, and the colors and the font remain unchanged. Of course, when you introduce a new branding, um, companies, organizations will need it for different applications. We're taking care of this. Um, it's available in all our three main colors, also as negatives. And I briefly want to show you in the wiki, we have prepared several sites for you. Um, there's a brand package site, and there's also an, an FAQ site for the branding. Mm. Now, over to the label. Um, our label is based on the common good balance sheet of an organization. Thus, it's always a label for an entire company of course, also nonprofit organizations such as Greenpeace, we already heard from them today. Um, but the majority of labels examine an individual product. Our label um, examines or looks at the entire organization with a 360 degree view and not only certain aspects of sustainability. So that means our label is always for the entire organization and not for individual products. So the label was part of the very basic idea from the very beginning of the start of our movement. And this is what the label looks like. Um, it's a completely new approach which takes social, ethical, and environmental factors into account. And thus it proves that it is possible to promote fair and responsible business practices. Now, um, at the beginning of the project, we had interviewed a number of ECG businesses and asked them, what are your needs? And based on their needs, we developed what we've now launched. What you see on the left-hand side is the full label, which has the QR code and econ good. And if at all possible, it should be reproduced like this in our standard um, corporate ID colors. And we will supply it or the organizations receive the label as an EPS, JPEG, and PNG file. And they get it in these full colors, as well as white and black, the corporate colors, and the green of the EU organic food label. And some companies, particularly the ones who do our food producers, told us that they frequently have products where they don't have that much space. And they would need something that is a maximum of 1.4 square centimeters. For those cases, they get the one which you see on the right with just the seedlings and the QR code. Now, um, we all know the situation. You're in the shop in front of a shelf. There are lots of products and you don't know which product you actually want to take. In the future, you can take out your smartphone and you can scan the QR code and you can try it right now. This QR code is large enough that it should work. Um, and that QR code then leads directly to the results of the common good balance sheet of the respective organization. And for many, many years, organizations had been asking for something where they can represent themselves as being part of this movement and talking about themselves. We're also offering that with this project now because um, as you see this, what you see here is the landing page, which you get to from with the QR code. 
On the left hand side, the company can enter some information about them. And on the right hand side, you see something like the organization and econ good. Why are they here? What have, why have they done this? And by reaching the test state, we have complete transparency. And you see the status on here. And during the year 2023, we had a pilot phase. And um, these are the organizations that joined. Now, big question, so who receives the um, label? Requirement is that they have a valid audit report with a positive result. They're registered in the audit database and um, they're a member of an ECG association. We launched at the Biofach in 20, on February 15th and um, it was very, very positively received by a very large audience that was very interested. Um, again, I will briefly switch. You can watch the entire launch on our YouTube channel. Um, and people came and congratulated us and said that it was wonderful. We have heard from WeTel today. They were one of the companies that joined in for the first advertisement um, about now using the label. And also some organizations right away started on a social media campaign to advertise that they are part of this label, or as we see on the top right-hand corner, um, Econ Good Switzerland played with that little N and said it's just like rock and roll. So um, we have a uniform label for all that measures social, ethical, and values. And it's an important step towards a uniform standard of sustainability. Um, where do we inform externally? First of all, if you go to our homepage, you can get here, it's on the top, you have that link and then you have information. So we inform external audiences. Information internally, we have this label FAQ site in the wiki. In the past, we've had the situation of a number of logos within the movement, and this is only a very, very small selection. There are significantly more. And the question sometimes was who gets what and why? And for simplification in the future, um, there will be the seedlings with text and instructions in the CD manual. So this way we're conserving resources and reducing complexity. And the idea is that um, it can say, we support econ good or I support econ good. And as a phase in, we support the idea of the economy for the common good. Um, so, some people were unhappy with the solution because there was nothing for peer balanced companies. We had suggested for them, we work according to the values of the economy for the common good. That was a suggestion that was brought to the team during info sessions in 2023. And based on that, the seedlings were also um, protected since the end of last year. Now, since we had gotten feedback that um, this is not sufficient, there should be a different solution. We had asked the um, auditors, companies, and consultants hubs for feedback. And yesterday was the last day to send in feedback. We've received some. We will be working on it, and we will get back to you and inform everyone about how it's going to continue. Um, now, introduction of the rebranding. Um, so there was this decision at the Delegates Assembly 2020, which said that we need to introduce in parallel the label and the logo. Um, 
and there is the interim solution of three years phase in the new logo with the still the language of the area. And um, also we have all these areas as you see. And so the idea is for the future, um, the econ good logo and underneath it, the appropriate addition of region, country or hub. Um, same thing for local chapters, et cetera. Um, the clear recommendation by graphics team is to eliminate the regionalization and just use the main logo. What I want to show you here briefly in the wiki, we have here a site with complete conditions and timetables of who uses what, when, how. Um, we have this Econ Good brand site also um, in the wiki. And at this point, I want to send out a humongous thank you to Estrellita um, because without her, all of this wouldn't have been possible. We have a new corporate design manual, which you can download from the wiki. And there's also lots of material available for you. I just want to show that to you. So here's the site in the wiki where you can download templates for a lot. We have new wording and terminology. Also for that, there's a wiki site. Due to lack of time, I don't want to go into details now. Um, so coming back to the beginning, on the left hand side, you see our new logo, our new branding. And on the right hand side, you're seeing the new label, which is a seal. And I thank you very much for your attention. And do we still have time for questions, Heidi? Unfortunately not. <laughs> but maybe we could ho hold those questions, if there are any, um, for eight o'clock um, mm -hmm. after we've done the wrap up. It's only half an hour. Yeah. So okay. if there are any questions, um, pop them in the chat and Daniela can help out. Right. Those well, what I'm close. also going to do, I'm putting our email address into the chat. So if you have questions, um, please send us an email and then we will respond to them that way. Thank you. Thank you, Daniela. That's brilliant. Thank and great to all. see the success of the conference that you had for the launch. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So now we're going to hand over to Raymond. So we heard from Raymond earlier in the panel. Raymond Underkirk is uh, working at Greenpeace Luxembourg and he's going to share with us the 